Hello, welcome to Salute. I'm your host, Bob Peters, and with me is a gentleman who is an Air Force veteran, Mr. John Cena. John is a member of our Veterans Committee here at the Eagles 4273. He just joined us. He is the Vice President of the ARI, so I have to behave myself. So, John, uh, first place, I'm glad that you're part of our committee now. Thank and you. We, we're going to get a lot done. Yes. But uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where were you born? Well, I was born in uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 1948. Uh, I lived in Scranton uh, most of my life uh, at the time. Uh, let's see, I, I left Scranton in 1979 for good, uh, other than military duty. I left there in 79, and uh, I've never, uh, I, I returned, you know, visiting. Uh, my parents were still back there. Uh, I still have uh, some family members up in uh, northeast Pennsylvania. So you, you don't go up there anymore? Uh, yeah, I do. I go, I go up there. I, use, I try to get up there at least twice a year. Uh, I have a daughter and a sister, and now I have a grandson who lives up there. Oh, so, congratulations. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, no, he's, uh, he's, he's no youngster. He's 29 years old. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, so, well, yeah. Pretty soon you'll have great-grandkids. Uh, well, yeah, who's see? We'll see what we'll happens. We'll see what right? happens, yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, we have this committee here for people who don't know. The Eagles are very supportive of our veterans. Uh, tell, us, tell people a little bit about the Eagles. Well, the Eagles is a is a fraternal organization. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, our particular area has about 20, 23 to twenty four hundred members between the auxiliary and the area itself. Uh, we do quite a bit of charity work, um, a lot of uh, local charity. Our uh, uh, we do a, a state charity also, and our national charity is the Diabetes Foundation, which we support uh, the uh, research in uh, in uh, Iowa, Iowa State University. Yeah, I, I'm very proud to be a member of this this area too because there's not too many places that you can set up a TV set and and, and do things for veterans. That's this exactly. place has welcomed us very Central Florida salute very very well. Anyway, you uh, get out of high school. Did you go right into the service? Ten days after. Ten days. Ten days after graduation day, uh, 27th of June. It was my birthday present to myself. <laughs> I turned, I turned 18 on the 27th. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and you, you uh, obviously went to, to Lackland, right? Lackland. Uh, I did the Lackland. I did a short tour in Lackland because uh, they were rushing us out of there uh, for Vietnam. Uh, it was going. It was getting pretty hot, about 66, uh, and uh, they uh, ushered us out. Four week, uh, four week basic, and then uh, Larry Air Force Base in Denver, Colorado, for uh, tech school as an aircraft armament system specialist. <laughs> how, how long were you at sc uh, school there? Uh, we were school. 16 weeks. 16 weeks, oh, okay. Because uh, I, well, when, I, when I got out, I went to uh, uh, Chinook. That was different, though. But anyway, so you were MMS, which is Munitions Maintenance Squadron, right? Well, um, back then, it, was, uh, it wasn't quite that way. Uh, munitions maintenance squadron basically back in those days uh, maintain were uh, they had a, a group called uh, munitions people which they maintained the ordinance. Uh, I was a loader and I was basically a part of the tactical fighter squadrons. Yeah, and uh, we we did that. Uh, the only time I was in munitions maintenance is when they uh, in Thailand when I was part of the gun shop in gun services. We were detached to MMS and then they finally. Put us into MMS, and so this way we wouldn't have to uh, certify loading weapons on the uh, flight line, because we were both basically just just handling guns. We would load guns, uh, change guns out when they. Oh, so when you, when you you were in TAC, right? Yes, yes, and that's correct. That wasn't loading the bombs. That that was loading the weapons, well, the bullets, right? <laughs> Well, uh, TAC was both uh, tactical air command. Uh, we we did the we loaded the uh, fighter bombers as they were called uh, the F fours, F one hundred fives. I never worked the F one hundred. However, those are the, those are the three aircraft I went to school on. Yeah. Uh, Water systems, and uh, like I say, we had to certify on the on the munitions to load them. Uh, you you would you had a, a set load that you would do, and you had a time frame to do it in, and uh, and that's how you certified and. Uh, uh, I, I really felt sorry for our poor, poor staff sergeant, uh, team chief, because he had three greenhorns right out of tech school, <laughs> so he had his hands full. So, 
So uh, I'm trying to relate because I was with uh, the bombers, you know, the B-52s. Yep. Yes. And the MMS, that's all. I, I always thought of MMS because they had the bomb loaders and there was always like 500 pounders or something like that. Yes. What would they put on a, a typical uh, fighter a typical as far as fighter, bombs go? A typical fighter. At the, at the time in Vietnam, well, in Thailand, we were loading up 750-pound bombs, uh, six, six bombs on a central on a central station of the uh, F-105. Which oh, was, they could uh, carry that much? Yeah, they carry, carried six 750-pound bombs on a, what was called a multiple ejector rack. And uh, uh, they pretty much bombed. They were actually bombers instead of fighters. However, we did get some, uh, we did get a lot of air-to-air -air, uh, combat with our, our fighters because they went so far up north. Yeah. So, so how, many, uh, how many planes were there when we were stationed over there? We had... Uh, we had four squadrons, uh, uh, which was a total of 24 each. Air, each uh, squadron was normally the uh, uh, a fighter, uh, a fighter squadron size. That was a pretty good size base then, huh? Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, it was the show base of Southeast Asia, is what it was. Karate Air Force Base, Karate Air Force oh, Base. Well, yeah, I, they, we, I don't, I don't the know facilities. Were I don't know if it's a show. Base. It was. It, mean, oh, it was. Budapal, Thailand is a, oh no, I'm talking show base. I mean uh, the facilities and everything. Oh no, no, I know. No, I was, I was up in Ubon. I went up to Ubon on an R and R one day, one time to see a friend of mine. So yes, I understand what you're saying. Well, we had the biggest uh, hospital too in Southeast Asia at our base. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, it, was, yeah. it was a huge base. Yeah, the SAC base. Well, yeah, yeah, we're SAC. We were SAC. Yes. Yeah. So you, you, you spent most of your time with the fighters. I spent all my time in tech. All my, uh, uh, all of my weapons time was with the fighters. Uh, I did. Uh, I did uh, from uh, Thailand. I went to uh, uh, Woodbridge, RAF Woodbridge in England, and I worked at four C's and D's there. And when I came back on active duty, I worked at Seymour Johnson on the F4Es, and that's the most modern fighter I ever worked on. I left. Uh, I left uh, Seymour Johnson just before they got the uh, F-15 Strike Eagles, and I was really disappointed. I really wanted to work them. They're, oh, they're a beautiful airplane. I want to tell you. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to slow it down a little because sure. I'm getting a little confused myself. Okay, you were you were at uh, Thailand? How long were you there? I was there one year. Uh, one year, and January there, to January. You put the attack, and then you went where? I went to uh, Woodbridge, England. Uh, I I left there in January. I went uh, went back to Pennsylvania on on leave, and then uh, I reported to uh, uh, England in February of uh, 2008, and I got discharged in 1970 from England. Oh, so you're basically at two places where, where you served. Uh, yes. You know. Yeah, but you you had some uh, more experiences later after the service, right? You you were involved in like, quite a few things. Yes, uh, after I left the Air Force, uh, <clears throat> when I first left the Air Force, uh, at first I got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, no nothing, you know, dead end jobs, and uh, so I I I went on into reserves to keep my rank. And because uh, I said, gee, I had it better in the in the military than I do now. And uh, I finally landed a landed a position as an apprentice lineman for the uh, uh, contractors. I was an uh, electrical lineman, not uh, not a telephone or cable. Mm -hmm. so, I know about that. So. I know you do. Yeah, I know. A few years. Yeah. So in all. How many years in the military did you do? I did a total of 22 years active duty and 11 years reserve. 22 years? Active We're duty. missing a and big portion of this. We well, started out with uh, I, I did, Thailand and I did, England, and then I did now four we got years. 22 years. I, I got out in 1970, <laughs> and I went into the reserves uh, in 71, and I went back on active duty in uh, 1982. And you went back on active duty active in 82. Duty in 1982, I went to Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. I did, I did uh, uh, almost six years there, and uh, I got a, uh, I got a, uh, uh, orders for Ryan Mine Air Base in Germany. I said Ryan Mine Air Base in Germany. They don't have any fighters there, and I said at the time it was Military Airlift Command. And I says Mac. Yeah. There is a God. And, and I got to, and I got, I got to Ryan Mine and I said he's got a sense of humor too. <laughs> but yeah. I ended up having a having a nice uh, having a, a, a nice uh, career in in uh, at Ryan Mine. I was in Fourth Mobile Aerial Port Squadron, and uh, we were just that Mobile Aerial Port. And I was I was constantly on the road. Uh, what does that mean, mobile? Uh, mobile. We we would 
we would go in like uh, for example when uh, during Gulf during the Gulf War we deployed to uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, we went to a, a bear base a landing strip and that was it uh, it was a, uh, uh, a a Saudi Arabian naval air base and it was just a, a, an operations building there and a landing strip and uh, we we uh, set up a, uh, we set up a uh, camp command and control operations there, uh, which which was done by uh, an outfit called the Alsi Airlift Control Element, and uh, uh, we were the mobile aerial porters, and so we set up the cargo operations, and so we went in with our heavy heavy uh, heavy equipment, K loaders, uh, which is a, a loader you put pallets on and you slide them in the back of the aircraft. We got we we have. Uh, one of the most modern types of uh, aircraft loading systems in, in the entire so world. So you, you really, uh, you started out like with, with uh, the fighters and um, they actually like MMS, really. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Well, and then first, now, now you're, you're loading the planes, which is a different kind of thing altogether, right? Exactly, exactly. Now we're loading cargo and passengers, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Where do these planes and the passengers go? Well, we most, well, when we got to Saudi, we mostly received them. Uh, we received the entire Marine, uh, the Marine division that, that landed in uh, Saudi Arabia. Everything that landed in Saudi Arabia came through us. Mm. Uh, and uh, I don't remember our manning, but we we, um, we had all the equipment. We in, actually ended up having the British deployed with us there also. So I worked a lot with the Brits, real good people to work with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. So. What did you think of Saudi Arabia? I mean, you know, we all, we talk to different people and they say go to different countries and this and that. What kind of, was it an eye opener or what? Saudi Arabia, yes, yes, it was. It was an eye opener. Saudi Arabia, they pretty much received us well. Uh, at first, uh, we didn't have any restrictions on us uh, when we first got there, and uh, we would uh, we would go downtown to local local places and do some shopping and and uh, um, you know we'd buy shirts and pants and things like that uh, and I was really impressed because when I was there in Saudi Arabia I was impressed at the number of made in America goods that were there really I swear and I, I couldn't believe it I said wow <laughs> that's why we don't have any here with that's, them all exactly, that's exactly right yeah. Yeah. so but yeah I was impressed uh, the people like I say they accepted as well uh, and uh, there were restrictions on the foods that we could have there and, and items like that. So, uh, but we we ended up finding a place where we could stay. We provided. To, we were staying in a like a, a compound, you know, the uh, these oil oil compounds. They were like a motel, and uh, we provided our own security at during the day and at night. We provide our own our own perimeter perimeter uh, walks, uh, and uh, we set up uh, uh, you know entry control points. And we would walk nightly. Uh, everybody uh, would get a chance to uh, uh, carry their M16 and walk the perimeter. So every once in a while, you know. And how long were you there? I was there almost eight months. Uh, we deployed on the uh, we would, we deployed a week after Saddam Hussein uh, invaded uh, Kuwait, and uh, diplomatic clearances and this and that. We finally ended up where we were supposed to be about oh on the 16th, uh, which was. Uh, 14, what, what did I say, seven, at 12 days later, we finally ended up where we were supposed to be. So, and uh, we stayed there for the duration until we finally got relieved uh, after the war was over. So, so you were there, uh, how long did you say you were there? Almost eight months. Eight months. Then, then what? Then where'd you go? Well, we went back you're to, still, you're, you're still, still in the still stationed right in now, Germany. Right? Yeah, I'm still stationed in Germany. And we went back to Germany. Uh, some of us got redeployed to, uh, uh, Turkey for uh, provide provide hope, provide comfort, provide comfort, provide comfort for the uh, the Kurds, if I'm not mistaken. So because they they, they took a beating during the war. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we went in there. Uh, I was only there for a couple of weeks because they uh, we we redeployed uh, people that were connected with the uh, the Gulf War redeployed back to Germany because we weren't supposed to be there, and then I went. Uh, I stayed in Germany until oh, 1992, July of 92, and uh, when the Soviet Union finally, you know, it collapsed, and we know that it, it, it collapsed about 91, and uh, we went in there 92 with uh, different, uh, I went in there 
the Soviet, former Soviet Union about five times with the relief supplies for uh, the Soviets. Uh, the, uh, we went in with medical supplies, uh, food, uh, you name it, we brought it in. I went brought into, it into where? Into, uh, well, I flew into the Ukraine one time, uh, Lviv, the capital. Uh, I flew into uh, St. Pete. So I'm trying to figure out how you got to be from MMS. Now you're on an airplane. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. I mean, well, you know, you went, oh, okay. Okay, I missed the spot there. We missed right, the spot. We, we missed, missed something. We missed, we missed the 11 years in the reserves. Oh, okay. The only outfit that I could get into in the reserves where I lived in Pennsylvania was the uh, was the 92nd Aerial Port Squadron Reserves. Uh, that place closed down oh, a few years back. I, I was there for their closing. Uh, they, I, I'd gone home on leave, uh, and I was there for their closing. I think it was on leave. Or I might have been out of the Air Force. I don't remember. But anyway, uh, I did 11 years in the reserves, and the only thing we had there was air transportation. And okay. we, now we, we're making Now we, we're putting it together. Had, all we had there was a classroom. Yeah. We had a couple of, had an auditorium, we split up into two classrooms, and we had a couple more classrooms and supply and, and items like that. And uh, uh, every quarter, once a quarter, we would go down, we'd, they, they'd fly us down to Dover Air Force Base for some hands-on training shots and uh, uh, different, uh, different classes that, you know, we had to take. Uh, until they finally started giving us some, uh, you know, these traveling instructors that would come in uh, for different things like, uh, you know, they started, uh, I, I think the original name was race relations and then it was human relations and, you know, I said, you know, everything, everything uh, 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 evolved uh, into different items. And so we would have to get off for all that training and uh, a lot of times, of course, we, we would work the flight lines down there. And uh, we get uh, different training on different vehicles. Uh, I drove everything from a, uh, a, four, a 4K forklift up to a 40, 40, uh, 40 K loader, it's, uh, which a 40 K loader is, uh, carries about five five uh, aircraft pallets, uh, 88 by 188 inches, uh, 88 by 108 inches. And those well, are the big metal, metal uh, pallets that we that we run into the back of the aircraft, and all roller system. Uh, we didn't have automated rollers back then uh, on the K loaders, and so it was all you know, you know, it was all manpower. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Now I understand. So, okay. so yeah, and uh, after Germany, four and a half years in Germany, I went to uh, uh, Charleston Air Force Base, and. Uh, uh, yeah, that'd be nice to be Charles. It was. I like it, Charles. It was. It was. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I was constantly uh, on the road there. Also, I did uh, Mogadishu. I deployed to Mogadishu. I deployed to Kigali, Rwanda. Uh, after you know, right at the end of their civil war, we went in there to you know to stop the dying and stuff, uh, relief supplies and uh, pure water, uh, uh, you know, desalinizers and stuff like that. Wow. So, and that was um, uh, all from uh, uh, civilian contractors here in the States. Uh, and uh, also even worked with some of the uh, Brits over there uh, for the uh, United Nations. Uh, we would, uh, we had the equipment and when they needed to get stuff downloaded, they, they called us. <laughs> I didn't know all this about you. I, I, I knew you were, you know, <laughs> In uh, MMS for a while, I didn't know you were involved with all yeah. this other stuff. In yeah. quite a yeah. quite a few years, twenty two yeah. years, you said. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Thirty three, actually. Well, I did you know eleven years reserves, and and with reserves, I went a few places. I went to Germany one time. I went to Spain uh, another time. I did two weeks in Panama. Uh, I've been to some nice places and some you know some not so nice places. Uh, uh, I went to uh, Ron, I went back to Ryan Wine and. Uh, Oh, I want to say 99, 1995 for Joint Endeavor. Uh, that's when we invaded Bosnia Herzegovina, and uh, I was a duty officer on a flight line. Uh, uh, we had uh, two duty officers: the lieutenant that I worked for, and, my, and myself as a, as a as a master sergeant E7. And I worked day shift; he worked night shift, and and uh, we pretty much roamed that we roamed that flight line like you wouldn't believe. I <laughs> mean, so you know, if you you you. you you have to know how to prioritize everything that's going on because there's just so much going around on around you, uh, and uh, and uh, without prioritizing what's going on, you're you're not going to get 
you're not going to get the movement that you need. And uh, we were launching. We, were, we we went in there with a promise to launch something like one aircraft every half hour, and uh, it was tough to make, uh, especially when we had uh, <laughs> when you're driving a K loader up to an aircraft on ice about that thick on <laughs> on a ramp. It's a little scary, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was good duty. Uh, you know, we had a lot of nice people in charge. The general that was in charge of the operation was a great guy. Uh, his name was uh, General Buck Marr. He was a two-star general, and he was really good people. Uh, I don't know if I can name names, but I don't know. Anyway, they, you know, no, I'm he, sure des you could, he huh? deserved it anyway. Yeah. He was a great guy. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but, so you had you were in several different countries. Yeah. And uh, wow, I did Ethiopia. I did three days in Ethiopia uh, when Mickey Leyland's airplane crashed. Uh, they were on a relief mission uh, to see what uh, the people in Ethiopia needed, and the aircraft went down into the uh, to a mountainside, and uh, we went in there. Uh, we were only there three days. Well, I, myself and one other guy were only in there th uh, three days. We left one man there because we left a piece of equipment there, and I don't leave equipment. And, you know, I don't leave equipment anywhere without somebody with it. Oh sure. So he got to stay there, and uh, if they needed somebody to operate a forklift, he was there to he was there to do it. So, uh, but I think it was all uh, uh, you know air rescue people that uh, that were all, all, all on the ground there. They probably had some security, you know, I don't know what forces they had for security, but uh, but that was what, what was going on there. So. I'm learning a lot about you, John. I didn't realize, I, I knew you were in the Air Force, but I didn't realize you were in that many different countries yeah. and that many different hats you yeah. were wearing yeah. at the time, yeah. you know. So is, that was a, your, la, your last deployment there? Oh, no, oh, no, no, that was in 90. We got 40 years to cover, right? That was in, <laughs> that was in 95, and uh, let's see, I think it was uh, 90, early 95 or 96. I was in uh, I was in Fujara, uh, the United Arab Emirates, as an advisor to the Navy uh, for air transportation. So that was a nice duty. I, I spent a hundred days there, and uh, uh, civilian clothes. And, you know, they, we weren't allowed to wear uniforms, so uh, civilian clothes. And stayed at the Hilton on the beach. And <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a lot of Marines out there going, yeah, 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 I was an Air Force guy. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we were working with the Navy, and uh, it was it was good. I met a lot of nice people there. You you, you know you meet you meet a lot of uh, you meet a lot of the no local nationals, and and in places like uh, you know the heavy heavy Muslim countries, you meet a lot of. Uh, uh, third country nationals because uh, a lot of the upper Muslims do not do their own work. They have other people do it for them, you know, and uh, they'll bring in people from other areas. I worked with a lot of Indians, uh, uh, some Pakistanis, and, uh, and you got to learn a lot of their customs and stuff. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, yes. Uh, I've got, you know, I've got, a, well, I've got a couple friends, but I, I met most of them, I met some of them uh, when I really got to get involved. Uh, after I retired and went back over as a civilian, but uh, yeah, uh, we did. Uh, I mentioned about the Russian, Russian, uh, you know, Soviet Union uh, deployments. I, I did Moscow. Matter of fact, I got a friend of mine's got his picture on Facebook. You were, you were in Moscow. <laughs> yeah, we got. I got wow. a picture of my friend <laughs> in downtown Moscow in front of the Kremlin. <laughs> And he, he got that on his Facebook page, and I said, I took that picture. <laughs> yeah, he's retired up in, uh, up in North Carolina now. So, yeah. Yeah, so you, meet, you meet a lot of people. And, you know, and the nice thing about the Internet and Facebook is, you know, you've, you've, you've been able to re recontact these people. It's been really yeah. amazing, you know. So, and... Uh, I lost so much contact with with so many people until the internet. And, and well, you know, you could almost you could write a book about all the people you met and the places you've been and the customs that, uh, you know. I mean, I I spent most of my, I only did four years, but most of my time was in in Thailand and 
I learned a lot about the culture over there. And, you know, it was quite common for a man to hold a man's hand because that's a sign of friendship. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the women would walk a step behind. Yeah. Those, that's yeah. just the culture of, you yeah. know, different countries. You must have seen a lot. Yeah. Put the time. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Well, I yeah. forgot most of mine. <laughs> it's been, I mean, it was back in '68. Yeah. So. Yeah. By do not where you're going. Yeah. Okay, I, guess, yeah. I still got. It. Back in the yeah, years. Nine. Yeah, by nine. Nine. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so actually, now where are we? Now you're in Moscow right now. Yeah. Well, I did. I did uh, the one time in Moscow we stayed and. Uh, the time that we got this picture taken in the Kremlin, we, you know, the uh, the air crew had crew rest, so we had ten fifteen on the ground crew rest before we take off. We went to an into a, a city called Chita, C H I T A. Uh, it's around Mongolia, and uh, these people had a lot of of uh, uh, Oriental uh, features to them. Mm-hmm. And uh, these people wanted to take us, and they just wanted to show us the place and everything. And we went in there, and it was snow and everything else. Oh boy, I want to tell you, <laughs> we downloaded our car. We took, we went in, we went in there with a 141, yeah. downloaded our car to cargo. And that was quite the bird to see one for you. Oh yeah, yeah. The uh, the engines outlived the airframe. Is what happened to those. Uh, they couldn't restress the wings anymore, so they had a they had a mock yeah. all them. But yeah, that was a good airplane. Uh, I liked work. I liked loading that. It, it was, it was an easy load, uh, and uh, so were you assigned uh, all these places when you were going? It was one particular aircraft, or it didn't matter? Oh no, you would uh, the trans- air transportation. No, yeah. no, it all, whatever landed, we 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 handled. Yeah, yeah. we um, we downloaded a uh, we we down- I had to download a C one thirty in Saudi Arabia, and, and it was amazing, you know. <laughs> I've only got so much equipment, and I've got six airplanes on the deck. Mm. <laughs> and so we needed a forklift to get this pallet off the back of the aircraft so we could get the rolling stock off. So, like I say, it was all Marines. So there's me and this young kid there who worked for me and everything. I was an E6 at the time, a tech sergeant. And uh, got myself and this young kid. Mobile area porters, we worked out five days a week. We did PT five days a week. We did free days, and then we did uh, calisthenic days, and then we did, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we did runs. We'd run formation runs three days a week, and, and then uh, in the middle, we, you know, we uh, the two middle days, we had free days, and we work out in the, in the fitness center, you know, lifting weights and stuff. Yeah. And so there were two of us there, and four Marines, and he said, well, how much does pal away? At 1,200 pounds, he said, ah, come on, we can take it off the aircraft. So <laughs> six of us, three on one side, three on the other side, to carry the aircraft, carry the paddle off. It was a C-130, it's low enough, you know, can get the paddle off. Carry it off the you, got, you got it off? We got it off and set it on the, on the side. <laughs> lowered, the, lowered, lowered the ramp, took the ramp down, off with the rolling stock. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> Can't do that nowadays, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah and those, this, oh, you know, those, no, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. No. no, you can't do that. No. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm confused where we are now. You, you were, uh, the last place you were, we were talking about, you were uh, where? Okay. Uh, well, I, I was in Saudi. Well, this was in Saudi. That Saudi. was in Saudi. That was during the, the Gulf War. Yeah, we jumped. I'm, I'm really jumping you know, around. I'm, I'm really, over. I'm really uh, jealous because you got to go to all these different countries. I've been in, I've been in 31 different countries. Uh, but uh, wow. uh, how many of them are you wanted in? <laughs> no, I'm not wanted. Oh, any. Okay. No, 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 no. I was, no, no thank no, God, I'm not wanted in any of them. But uh, yeah, I uh, I did a uh, I did a I did I did uh, something like 80 days in Kuwait, uh, TDY. Uh, I think that was in the 90, 94. 95, 95, and uh, uh, I was there for 80 days. Uh, I was a de- detachment chief at the airfield. I had, uh, it was myself plus nine nine people. I had uh, uh, six 
cargo people and four maintenance maintenance type people, and uh, we would handle the uh, aircraft that come in mostly uh, mostly 141s back then, uh, a couple of C5s, and uh, uh, it was a nice little duty. We we couldn't go downtown or anything. Uh, a lot of it was decent. You know, it is what you make it. Uh, yeah, and that C5, is that just that came in like when I was getting out. Oh uh, yeah, that thing is huge. Yes, it is. It, it carries uh, carries two hundred forty thousand pounds, uh, and it's got seven seventy three seats in the uh, in the aft aft uh, upper deck of the aircraft. Airline seats. Yeah. So, and uh, uh, that's that can be a hard aircraft to load plant sometimes, but you know, different different stress points. You know, different. Different weight restrictions. Yeah, yeah, you have to balance it. Not out. like that. Not like that. C seventeen. C seventeen. Boy, that's it. It's in there, buddy. <laughs> so, and uh, we worked a lot with the army uh, in in Germany. Uh, we were uh, mobile area porters, and one of the things we did was we did airdrop. So I carry a set of army rigger wings uh, because I, I I could rig airdrop for. Uh, we used to rig practice loads. Uh, we load. I don't want to get too technical, but we would load uh, these uh, airdrop pallets, and uh, we'd rig the chutes, pack the chutes, rig the chutes, and all that. And uh, uh, we would go and retrieve them for you know when they were practice loads. We'd go to a place called Grafenveer most of the time and drop them. And we'd go down with a tractor trailer and a forklift and pick them up and bring them back and redo them. When I was in uh, Charleston, just before I retired, I was in charge of aerial delivery, and uh, that's what we, that's what it was called, aerial delivery airdrop. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, civilian, uh, it was the assistant terminal manager uh, in uh, Charleston, says, "Why don't you guys do something special?" Okay, so I got a couple of guys that work with me. I said, Get on the phone, find us two howitzers. So we found, we found two howitzers, howitzers up in up at DRMO in, in Chambersburg. Went up, picked them up with the tractor trailer, brought them back down, and we rigged them. And I said, this, this, "There got to be rules, though." I said, "This is a, you know, you don't just get this darn thing, put it on a pallet, you know, rig it and boom, it's, you know, airdrop it. There's a lot of work to it." So, oh yeah. I says, "I don't have that kind of manning, you know, because we do deploy and everything." I says, "Look," I said, "You can have one each." Once a month, and it's it's there's got to be there's got to be a limitation to it, you know. I mean, sometimes we make an exception, but you you got to give us a break because it's a lot of rigging. So you know, first time that come out of the aircraft, ah, oh, this is beautiful. It flew over the top. Here it comes out the back of that one forty one. It's oh man, that was just beautiful. It just floated on down to the ground. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> we used to drive up to North Air Force Base. It was uh, just a little. Uh, it was a regular, regular runway, and uh, fire department there because we, you know, the aircraft instead of tying up the runway down to Charleston because Charleston we we, <clears throat> we uh, shared the runway, so instead of tying up the runway with touch yeah, and goes, yeah, yeah, so instead of tying up the runway with touch and goes, they do them up at Northfield, and so we had a fire department up there, uh, you know, about twenty four seven, and uh, we had a building there where we housed our equipment and housed house supplies and everything else, so. It was good. Wow. You had quite the career, my, my friend. Yeah. Any particular uh, funny moment or, uh, you know, I'm just family show? We're in Mogadishu. And uh, uh, they finally bring in Delta Force. Well, this guy used to, we used to have, you know, incoming small arms fire, stuff like that. Oh, about every third day, but it mostly go between mostly go between the mountain top, the hilltops. You know, they'd be shooting at the soldiers and the and the Italians, and we were down, you know, in the valley where the aircraft part and stuff. But right after Delta Force got there, boy, this guy showed us he know where he live, and he put in well, I don't know how many mortars that one night. And different, they weren't really close or anything. You know, they covered. <sighs> I lay in, <clears throat> I go in my my little space, a helmet on, flat jacket, laying up against the sandbags, you know. And Moise uh, says, "Shall we this guy stop?" I said, "I gotta, I gotta go." 
So I said, gee, this guy, he never done this. So all of a sudden, I'm really quiet. I says, okay. So I says, okay, let's go. I go out, Web. I go out, Web follows me out, out the door, and he got wooden skids, you know, <clears throat> you know, for walking, you know, yeah, right. on the sand. Man, all of a sudden, there's an explosion, and I turn around, and there's flames, you know, and it hit the top of this building, I guess, with a mortar, you know. And I look up there, and I look over, Webb's gone. <laughs> He's nowhere to be found. <laughs> and I says, look that way, look that way. He says, I'm going to the latrine. I don't care. I got to go. <laughs> so I call. <laughs> I'm in there. Get my flag jacket on, and all of a sudden, boom. Oh, my God, huh? Boom. I said, this guy's trying to kill me while I'm in the bathroom for crying out loud. No respect. <laughs> this, guy got, yeah, this guy got no respect. You know, I, I don't know, maybe I was just stupid, but I, I, I never felt afraid in, in, in Mogadishu. You, you know, yeah. I, 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 I was like the same thing when I was in, you don't think about those things. I, no. I, I talked about this on one, one other show I did about September 11th and, and the, when the towers went down. And yeah. I was married and with kids. Everything. Yeah. Back then, you're single and you, you really you don't think nothing of it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but yeah. anyway. Yeah, I, uh, I was, uh, well, I had three kids when I was in Mogadishu. But I just, uh, how, uh, uh, I was going to ask you a question about uh, <coughs> what rank were you when you got out? E7? E7, yeah. E7. So you, uh, we're going to be running out of time here soon. So, that, but uh, I'm amazed that uh, I learned a lot about you today that I didn't know, and I've known you for a while. But uh, give you a lot of credit, my friend, and uh, I'm, it's it's going to be great working with you with, on the Veterans Committee here in the Eagles because well, uh, we got a good group. I'm looking forward to it, and uh, you know, I mean, uh, I'll tell you right now. Every time I uh, do an interview with people here, and I take them around the area, I show them your picture on there. I said that, I said that's the chairman of our veterans committee. Does a great job. And I see he's a great guy, and I mean, you know, so. What, what do I owe you for that? No, uh, <laughs> no, no. I always speak the truth, Bob. Uh, well, listen, one thing about me. <laughs> listen, I think I think we're running out of time. I know, but. Well, uh, Okay. Anyway, uh, I just want to thank you for your time. Thank you. And for your career in the service. I'm re Like I said, I'm really, really impressed, John. I won't pick on you so quite much. as much. Quite as much. <laughs> Bob, so, thank you. I appreciate it. It's time to say goodbye. And, uh, all right. You know how we, I don't know if you know how I do this. We go. To all our veterans out there, active military and their families, we salute you for all you do. Till next time. <laughs> <laughs>